Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist, and recently I've got a lot of messages about the build roofs uh, modifier in my geometry node assets, and essentially it was brought to my attention that while in that build roofs video I went over all of the settings, I never really showed how you could start with an empty scene and set it up um, and apply the modifier so that you could make a roof. So that's what I'm going to try to do in this video today. And so let's start here with this plane. Um, this is essentially what the input mesh for the build roofs node should be just a plane or a set of planes um, so for example we could have two like this that would be like the footprint of the roof that's the input that the build roof uh, node or modifier expects so then if we go to our modifiers here um, one thing i want to mention before i start making the roof is just something i realized as i was doing this which was that if you go to the add mo modifiers and you search for build roof, which is the new feature that was added in Blender 4.0, um, build roof won't show up. And I was kind of confused why that was. Um, it won't show up in the file that's available online right now. And it, um, what I realized was you there actually have to have, there's all these options for when the modifier appears in the menus. So mesh has to be checked. So I'm gonna have to update all of the geometry node asset files so that all of the modifiers are tagged correctly for what they're supposed to be used on. Um, so I'll try to do that soon. Anyway, I'm not sure where you're supposed to set this. I found it in the data API in the outliner, but um, like in the properties of the node group, you can check that it's a modifier or a tool. Um, but I'm not sure where you're supposed to set what what kinds of objects the modifier is supposed to work on. Anyway, um, so yeah, I thought people might not know about that. I didn't know about it, but now I do. Anyway, so I want to update my geometry node assets so that they can be found from the search menu. But in the meantime, I guess you'll have to drag it in from the asset browser and drop it on the object, which was the old way of doing it. Um, that still works. Now, by default, you get kind of a funny result, which is because it's looking for a ridge height vertex group. Um, if you turn that off, the result makes a little bit more sense. Or what might be a better way to do it is to actually make that ridge height vertex group. Go into edit mode and then just assign all of the vertices with like a 0.5 weight or something and that way you can have the height be an attribute so you can have different parts of the roof be set to different heights by changing the value which is like a percentage zero to 100 percent of the height scale um, you can change that by assigning different weights to the vertex group anyway so this is what we get as an initial result now it would be better if the roofs ran the opposite direction and so we can do that by adding a second vertex group called ridge direction like so. And these can be named whatever you want. You just want to have an equivalent name set in the attribute field here. So then if we go into our mesh and we assign a property to the ridge direction, then um, it'll switch the ridge lines to run in the opposite direction across those faces. From there, it's just a matter of editing the settings on the build roof modifier. And then once you have that base build roof modifier on there, all of the other modifiers that start with BR colon um, work on top of that base build roof modifier. So normally you can't just add, for example, a roof surface array on a, your custom roof mesh because all the different parts of your custom roof mesh won't be tagged with the integer IDs that a roof that's generated with the build roof modifier is. So just as an example of how we could take this further, we could put a material on here and select that as the material. We could add a, a cube. We need to move it up one and over one on the x-axis so that the origin point is in the corner. And then we could just delete these faces. This will be our wall template. We could drag a wall material onto that and rotate the UVs. Then we could select that object as the wall for the gables. We could adjust our UV scale, something we like. Um, we could adjust the overhang, all this. We could slide this roof over because it wasn't quite working. And then we could add, say, a, a beams and choose to put those on the gables. And then we could edit this again, try to get everything to line up. Then we could go in, we could give it some more resolution and we could change the shape like so. Um, 
Anyway, so hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can get started with it to where editing the settings on the modifiers produces a result that looks like a roof because um, I think I skipped over that somehow in the video where I showed all the settings. Um, hopefully that answers some of those questions. And if you have more, feel free to ask, obviously. And um, other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.